Hello, you're very welcome back to Why the Long Face, a podcast with me, Horse O'Keefe. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're all staying safe from the storm. I'm sat here, getting ready to record, looking out at the pissing rain. And I thought, what could make this day just a little bit better? And so I put on a few tunes. Which is ironic because that is that is the topic of today's podcast. I'm just going to talk a bit about music. Like music is everywhere. That's that's very obvious. Like you, everyone listens to music every day. I think it would be physically impossible to not listen to music at any point in your life. Music is is one of my big loves, it, and it always has been. My music tastes have definitely changed over the years, but even you know that's just interesting to see how different like pieces of music can pinpoint different moments in your life so I just want to talk a bit about that today talk about what music means to me talk about my somewhat strange love for covers like I love cover versions nearly too much to be honest Um, and then of course I'm going to bring it all back and start talking about mental health somewhere because that's just what I what I seem to do best Music has been like a part of my life for pretty much as long as I can remember. Like a lot of, there's a lot of my childhood stories or childhood memories that revolve specifically around music. One of my, one of my most favoritest um, memories is, so I think I was like two or three and we were still living in England at the time. And I was gone to this kids disco and I had gone with my mom my mom was running a nanny agency at the time so there was like a lot of the people she would have worked with were there and it just so happened that they were relatively posh people and so the DJ was there and she was playing you know like Bob the Builder and Postman Pat and all the kids favourite songs and then the DJ came on and she said, and now I have a very special request from my little friend down there in the yellow shirt. And and Mam just knew straight away. She just put her head down and was like, oh, shit. Um, so the DJ then proceeded to play Song 2 by Blur and Sex Bomb by Tom Jones. And I danced my little arse off. And I'm pretty sure I was trying to get my mam to dance with me and she pretended that she didn't know me. Which is understandable. Because it's not many two or three year olds whose favourite songs are Song 2 by Blur and Sex Bomb by Tom Jones. I mean, to be honest, I think it just means that I'm cultured or meant that I was cultured at that age, that I had such a vast knowledge of music already. But I can just imagine all these other kind of posh mems watching in disgust and disdain as I dance around to Tom Jones singing about a woman (laughs) funnily enough I didn't actually know the name of I didn't know that song 2 was called song 2 I would just call it woohoo because that's like a main part of the chorus and my aunt came over to England to visit around in and around the same time like I, I was still quite young my aunt decided to get up with me one morning and let mum and dad like have a lie in and I kept on asking for woohoo and my aunt god bless her hadn't a fucking notion what I was talking about like had absolutely no idea what a woohoo was and then I was getting more animated because all I wanted was my woohoo and she wouldn't give it to me why couldn't I have my woohoo and my aunt was like flaking through the presses trying to find a cereal or something called fucking woohoo and I'm pretty sure I gave my aunt um, a mental breakdown but look that's alright too these things happen (laughs) I'd like to think I have quite a varied taste in music like there's no one specific genre or anything that I prefer over, over the others like if on my Spotify you could literally hit shuffle and it would go from ACDC to Big Tom to Michael Bublé 
and literally anything else in between um, and I, to be honest there's only one person that I have to thank for that and that's Daddy Horse and that's that's not a weird nickname that my fans have for me I'm talking about my actual my actual dad my my father now he, to this day he has this unbelievably huge collection of, of CDs and he passed on a lot of his knowledge and a lot of his his own favourite songs or favourite bands and stuff he passed those down to me um, and I think that's great because it's like it's 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 definitely something not that we needed to bond like we've always had a good relationship or whatever but it was just something that we definitely bonded over um, I, like especially so when we move back to Ireland we have like home videos of me and my sister we had this nighttime routine where there was like three or four songs that we would just have to listen to before we went to bed um, and in theory that is not a bad idea like you put on a couple of songs that are nice and they're calming and they kind of help relax the child and they help the child get into the mind frame of like oh I need to go to bed now and it's calming that would make sense but no not my family not my dad so we obviously had to have song two and sex bomb they were like staples at that point then we also had take a look around by limp biscuit which is like the theme song for mission impossible 2 and we also had weapon of choice by fat boy slim which we just referred to as the flying man because the music video for that was Christopher Walken dancing around this like hotel lobby and eventually he starts flying around the place and so like we would listen to those four songs pretty much every night before we went to bed and like we weren't calm like we were dancing around like I had my little wooden spoon out for Sex Bomb because I knew pretty much all the words and then we had like a little choreographed dance that like dad would do with us for Take a Look Around and to be fair maybe it did make sense maybe it just tired us out and then we went straight to bed but I have like those memories alone are great they're foggy obviously because I was quite young but the fact that I've consistent like consistently listened to all those songs over the years every time I listen to them I can't help but think of of that moment and we actually had a great moment recently where we, at my sister's 21st um, we're all in the kitchen we're all langers well except for dad dad doesn't drink dad's just a lunatic we're all in the kitchen and I put on take a look around and like there was still a couple of other people there but that didn't matter me and my sister and my dad we all did the we all did the little dance and hopped around the place and head banged and that like we wouldn't have that little thing or that little bonding moment if it wasn't for that song and again it's kind of like what I was saying last week with movies I don't think the intent of the song was to have like this little family bonding moment like when Fred Durst was writing the song I think he was just trying to write a really heavy Limp Bizkit song but that's not what it is for me it's it's a gateway to this little pocket of time and like you could, it, I could I could not hear the song for you know for a few months I might just it might not like just might not come up on my Spotify or or, or whatever but when I do hear it I just automatically start smiling because I get these little memories back so as I kind of moved into my teenage years I did I did start listening to a lot more kind of rock and like emo rock I had a little emo phase because I was an angry teenager and the world didn't understand me and the words and the lyrics just made sense well that's what I thought anyway but like I'm gonna ha I have a very controversial take now a hot take if you will I think Nickelback are a great band and please please don't turn off the podcast just hear me out I think it became a thing that Nickelback were bad and then you had to joke about Nickelback being bad but if you actually listen to their music it is pretty fucking good they've got like a great range of like soft rock and then like 
really hard almost kind of metal but obviously not fully metal um and i just i genuinely think they're great but i remember listening to hero um which is chad kroger's song that he did for for spider-man and then i went on and was listening to how you remind me which was just another nickelback song and i think chad kroger's just got this kind of gravelly like angst in his voice and like this was probably just before I was a teenager so I was probably like 10 or 11 and I would listen to these songs and I'd play them really loud and I'd be like yes I understand that like that that emotion that he's feeling I I feel that now why I was feeling that at the age of 10 and 11 I don't know again probably something I should discuss with a, a professional this keeps happening as well in the podcast. I keep finding things that I, I'm actually getting genuinely worried that there's like some sort of psychological problem with me. I keep having to write them down and be like, yeah, that's another thing to talk about with a therapist. But anyway, don't worry about me. I'm fine. So yeah, I went into my little emo phase then. And then there was a very pivotal like turning point in my musical journey. I discovered cover versions thanks to pretty much YouTube, like I would just look up a song and then I'd find that someone else covered it and I'd listen to it. And this is an argument or a discussion, I suppose, that I've had with a friend of mine because uh, he's really, really into music as well. And he isn't a massive fan of cover versions, whereas I am. Like a good, I'd say 40% of my Spotify is cover versions. And for me, it really depends. Like the cover versions I like the most are like, when they completely like genre flip the song. So like there's a, a band called Winchester. They're an American group and they did like a country version of Ignition, which I just think is one of the best things I've ever heard. I think it was like the top song in my Spotify the year I discovered it. So like that's one branch of covers that I really like when they just completely genre flip it and they just make the song their own. And I just find it really interesting because you could be halfway through listening to it before you actually realize what the song is. And then I just get a little laugh off it and I just end up adding it to my Spotify. But then there's the other side of it where, and I think the perfect example for this is Sound of Silence. Obviously, Sound of Silence, Simon and Garfunkel, really, really famous song. And I, I knew the song. I had never really listened to it that much. I probably heard it on the radio or, or whatever. And I liked it, but it just, it, it was nowhere near like any of my favorite songs or anything like that. And then Darkness covered it. No, they didn't. Darkness did not cover it. Jesus Christ, that would be, that would be, <laughs> that would be something else, wouldn't it? Um, no. Disturbed covered it. It's, darker it's heavier it's a lot more rocky that honestly was probably one of the first times that a song fully like emotionally resonated with me because I, I i i think i was like 16 17 and it was when i was kind of really struggling with my mental health and my depression because i was young and i was trying to figure out what was going on I didn't know was it just puberty or was there something wrong with me or but I knew that I just felt this sadness and this like pressure all the time and that song I listened to it over and over because it was like yes someone understands or at least this is a way that I can put it because at the time I didn't know how to put it into words, like what I was feeling. And I I think music has a great power that way that you can put a lot of emotion into a song and that will resonate with people. It'll, it will help people understand or again, just make them realize that they're not alone, that there is someone else out there that is going through what you've gone through like if you think of any situation whether it's like depression anxiety even something like more simple just like like grief like losing someone or a breakup 
or just general anger to the world, anything like that. There is a song for every one of those things. And there is honestly nothing better than if you're, if you just have, if you're really frustrated and you're really angry, if you just put on some really, really heavy, like angry songs and you dance or you sing or you just lep around the place, that gives you a little bit of a release. Well, for me, it does anyway. I get like a great little like boost of serotonin. Literally, even only last night, I've been having a kind of a few rough weeks and I hadn't been cooking dinners properly, but I decided last night I was going to cook myself a nice, like proper dinner. So I went out into the kitchen and I had my little speaker and I was just cooking dinner and I was just listening to they weren't even angry songs. They were just upbeat rock songs. And I was singing and I genuinely couldn't stop smiling. I was just in my kitchen, cooking a dinner, shaking my arse and trying to sing. But I I just couldn't stop smiling. I, I just got a great little boost off it. And I feel like people underestimate the power that music actually has. Like during the first lockdown, I taught myself guitar. I was given a guitar, just like a very small, basic, like acoustic guitar. And I just started teaching myself chords. And now I have my own acoustic and my own electric guitar. No, I'm still not very good, but I play because I want to play. And like, I would honestly highly encourage everyone out there to learn an instrument. Because it's just a great little skill to have. Like, I I would honestly say I pick up the guitar pretty much once a day and I would just play an old song that I know. And I, I don't know many chords. I know pretty much just the basic chords. But it is a great little satisfaction of just playing those chords. And I know it sounds stupid, but when you play the chords and the song sounds like the recording of the song by the, by the artist, that's just a great little feeling to be like, oh yeah, I'm actually doing this right. And then of course you can get more adventurous and start changing the strumming or change the tone of it. Again, because of my love of covers, I generally try and I do like, I'll try and make a happy song sad or a sad song happy and just flip them around. And it's literally just for my own enjoyment. It's just a great little skill. It's a great thing to do. I would highly encourage anyone. And honestly, lads, if I can teach myself guitar, anyone can do it. Now, I don't really think I can do a podcast on music and not talk about I suppose some of my favourite artists like I'll be honest it's very rare that there's one artist that I like like a lot of their music like my Spotify is is pretty much just like sprinkled with like one or two songs by specific artists but there is a few there is a few out there that I really really do like as I mentioned Nickelback genuinely does actually happen to be one and I feel like now at the age of 24 that I'm I'm able to admit that, like I can stand on my own two feet and say, you know what? Yes, I do like Nickelback and I will take any backlash. I will have that argument and I will defend them. Foo Fighters will be another one that I just really, really like. I went to see them live, Jesus, probably three years ago now. And honestly, it was one of the best gigs of my life because they are like one group that a lot of their songs they're either just fucking great tunes like I just really enjoy them or they have a couple of songs that really again resonate with me there's one song in particular that I want I want to actually get a quote from it as a tattoo the song is called Walk and the quote is I'm learning to walk again I believe I've waited long enough and I found that song at a time when I was starting to kind of come out of my depression I was kind of gaining an understanding of what mental health was and again I'm not, I'm not even entirely sure what the meaning behind the song is um, I rarely to be honest if a song resonates with me for whatever reason I rarely actually look at what the intention of the song was because I don't want that to like tarnish what the song means to me like if there's a line in a song that really resonates with me for whatever reason or I have a specific understanding of it I want to leave it that way that's and that's just a me thing honestly I actually really like the music of Big Tom 
it started as a joke between me and my friend uh, and then we just actually started listening to it uh, to the point where I've actually sang uh, you're going out the same way you came in I've sang that in a pub quite drunk don't even think anyone really listened to me but I, I, I sang it um, I also have a lot of love for Tenacious D uh, it's Jack Black's band for anyone who doesn't know and they're just great like musically they're just great rock songs but then they're obviously it's Jack Black so they're they're quite funny and they're quite comedic as well and I suppose more recently one artist that has really defined my suppose my music taste or just even just helped me a lot is Bo Burnham and Bo Burnham is an American comedian and he's always been one of these guys who like again it's a lot of like comedic songs but then he always happens to have one or two in his set that are just they're actually really deep or they just have a throwaway line that you actually realise afterwards you're like oh fuck that actually hits quite hard um, so Bo Burnham has always been very open about his mental health and stuff like that and he actually took a break from performing because he was having like really bad panic attacks on stage and he just decided to take a break to try and sort himself out and he had finally gotten to a point where he felt like he could return to performing so he signed on to do a special with Netflix and then the pandemic hit and he still he still decided to like follow through with this special he just decided to record it himself at home and if you haven't seen Bo Burnham's special on Netflix I would highly recommend you watch it because it is honestly probably one of the most raw portrayals of mental health that I've ever seen and it's not see he's not acting that's the thing he set up cameras all over his house that were pretty much recording the entire time he stayed in his house for months just trying to come up with songs and yet like there are some songs that are just there for the comedic comedic value and like the they are genuinely just funny songs but again there's two or three songs in that special that just hit so hard and you can f- you literally see him having breakdowns like when i watched the special it actually took me two like two attempts i watched half of it and i had to pause it and stop because it it was getting too much for me it was like very hard for me to watch but i eventually went back and watched the second half and i actually ha- haven't watched it again once was enough like i've listened to the songs loads and that's kind of linking into this whole like music and 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 depression or music and mental health there's a great power in music to talk about mental health like i was saying last week obviously my passion is film um and i want to do portrayals of mental health in film like and i and, and so, to be honest i have i've written some songs i've done some songs about like mental health and stuff no they're not great and they're just for me but it's a great way of getting my thoughts kind of out of my head and i i want to just I suppose throw a question out there I, I pretty much I know the answer but like I know if I'm like in a in a kind of bad mental state you have this kind of self-awareness that if you do kind of positive things or if you watch like a, a happy movie or you listen to some happy songs it might make you feel better but you deliberately decide not to like you will deliberately put on the saddest songs that you know to almost prolong the either prolong the depression or the or kind of the the bad mental health or it's just a case of you feel so bad that you don't you're just not capable of listening to something happy and like i i 100% do that i was just wondering does anyone else do that because it's a weird it's it's a very weird thing that like songs i don't want to say they can have a negative effect because i think that all songs will just have some sort of like emotional resonance with you i just find it i'm just talking from my perspective i I don't fully understand why i do it but when i'm sad like if i have to walk to work i will skip any remotely happy song i will only listen to like the really sad piano kind of songs or and see that's what i'm saying the music has this power to almost alter your feelings or at least try and sway your feelings in a certain direction so to be honest i think i might just leave that kind of question there it's just something to think about like 
one because maybe you, you mightn't be able to think about it now but maybe the next time you might happen to have a bad day and you go to put on that sad song just maybe think about it just for a second and and think why am i actually doing this and is this honestly helpful if it is like there obviously there can be some sad songs that you just want to like listen to the lyrics and that's fine but if you feel like you might be doing it because you're just trying to prolong feeling sad or you just everything in you just doesn't want to feel happy just just try and take a step back and just have a think about it now i know i said that this episode of the podcast was about music and it is but i also want to just introduce a little segment that i want to do every week it's called movie of the week nothing special about it it's pretty much exactly what it says on the tin it's a movie that i've watched in the last week that i just want to suggest that you might like you might also want to watch because i really enjoyed it or just something that maybe i didn't enjoy i don't really know it's just going to be a film that i've watched in the last week that i want to talk about so my movie of the week this week is a movie called boiling point it came out this year and it stars Stephen Graham. Now, Stephen Graham is an English actor. He's done a lot of stuff on Channel 4. I think he's kind of most known for This Is England. Or he was in The Gentleman more recently. He's a really underrated actor. Like, everything I've seen him in. He was in um, Line of Duty as well. And he's just... I can't help but be captivated by him when he's on screen. He's honestly just, he's just such an amazing actor. I think you could honestly put him in a room painting and I would probably watch him because I'm just really, really captivated by him. He just does such a good job. So the film that he was in, uh, Boiling Point, he plays a chef uh, in like a high-end restaurant in London and it's just, it's just like a really tense night in the restaurant but like the main thing of the film is that it's done in one shot like one continuous take almost like it's a play so like it follows him and it follows like the restaurant manager and like some more of the chefs and stuff like that and it just the camera is just constantly moving it like it never cuts between anything and it just it works so well because because the camera is constantly moving you constantly feel all this stress and all this tension and you're literally waiting for someone to reach literally reach boiling point and it i sat there and i was entirely engrossed for the entire thing like there wasn't at any point that i kind of was like oh it's it's losing me like i was constantly invested because it's got like two or three little subplots kind of going that i would imagine it, that's pretty much what happens when you're working in a restaurant like there's it's it's so fast paced and it is so tense and that really 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 comes across so i would highly recommend um, that you watch it fun fact about the movie as well it's actually based on a short film of the same name that also starred Stephen Graham so like they when they originally made it it was like a 22 minute long short film and it it reviewed really well so then it became a feature film it's like the same director pretty much a lot of the same cast as well which is great to see because I, that's what I would love to do I would love for one of my short films to eventually be picked up so the fact that that is actually happening is pretty great so yeah if you come across boiling point anywhere i would highly recommend that you watch it so just before i finish up uh i threw up on instagram during the week um that i was going to do the podcast about music and i just asked people like who are some of your favorite artists and and why and i got a few replies so uh someone said biffy clyro the amount of friendships i have uh, made bonding over that band is phenomenal also Simon is a babe yes Simon is a babe and yes Beefy Clyro they're, I think they're because they're one of those groups that a lot of people have heard of them but not a lot of people might necessarily listen to them so when you find someone else that listens to them that's like an instant thing that you can bond over and to be honest that's a great point like I've bonded with lots of people over lots of different uh, musical groups or bands and stuff someone has said Bon Ivers 22 a million to be honest i have to admit i don't necessarily know them myself but what they said was that album still gets me hard (laughs) 
<laughs> I should not. I should. I should not have left the pause there. <laughs> that album, maybe I should. That album hits me hard. Might sound better because it's what I was listening to at the depths of my lowest low. So again, that's just something that like that person will always have an emotional resonance with. Or maybe it is just that Bon Iver gets them hard. I don't know. <laughs> and lastly, we have someone who said uh, Joel Corey, because everything he releases is a banger. And you know what? That's just a perfectly valid reason to, to like an artist. If everything they do is good, do you know what? There you go. What more do you need than that? So there you go. That's my... That's all I have to say really on music. I had a few hot takes in there. We had some fan interaction as well, which you know, which is great. And if if anyone has anything to say to me about any episodes of the podcast, please just shoot me a message. Because like I'm happy to talk about I'm I'm happy to talk about other people's opinions as well, not just not just my own. Um So as of as for next week's podcast, um I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing yet. Uh, it's possible that it's an interview or it's possibly going to be on something else I'm not entirely sure yet but keep an eye out on social media and I will keep you all informed uh, I might have a few more questions for you so I hope you enjoyed I very much enjoyed um, especially hearing about that one fan who gets hired for Bon Iver that was that was great um, so look for the next week lads Mind yourselves, keep the head up, and God bless.